A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. <laughs> so, I'm scrolling through YouTube a lot. Um, on mobile, I'm not much of a mobile video watcher, but, but I still scroll through the recommendations quite a lot. Um, and usually you get videos recommended and also garbage memes and the like, but sometimes you also get wild community posts popping up. And recently I took a screenshot of this community post here. I'm not certain who posted it. The text look kinda like one from Black Pen Red Pen, but this doesn't matter here. It piqued my interest. It's from the Stanford Math Tournament of 2011. And this is what we want to cover today. Um, OP was asking to find the integer solution and yeah, take the challenge, blah, blah, blah. And this right here is um, the equation where we need to find integer, uh, integer solutions to this one right here, where n is uh, the solution, basically. Um, 1 over log base 8 of n plus 1 over log base n of 1 quarter is equal to negative 5 over 2. And yeah, that's what we are going to do today. Try it out for yourself before watching the video. And I hope you are going to enjoy what you are seeing today. By the way, video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brilliant. So if you're not yet familiar with number theory, algebra, and the like, why not make sure to check out their courses. And now we are going to dive right in. So the first thing that actually comes to my mind is to do a base of change. No, actually the first thing that comes to my mind is to get rid of the one quarter here because this is freaking me the fuck out. One quarter is nothing other than four to the negative one power. And by using logarithm properties, we can drag the negative one as the exponent to the front. So this is actually looking quite a bit better. Um, and now we are going to do a change of base because here we have the logarithm of n, okay, kind of, and here we have the logarithm base n. So we want to put this in terms of a natural logarithm, for example, and then start using the exponential um, function, maybe on both sides to basically solve for our n. No matter what it is we want to do later, at first let's do a change of base. I'm going to explain to you what the change of base is. Um, it's a very nice identity on logarithms. So in normal case you have a to the b power b equal to c. To get yourself the power up here b, what you're going to do is you can either take log base a on both sides. If you take log base a here, you can drag the b to the front. Log base a of a is equal to one. So b is going to be equal to log base a of c. This is one of the ways to solve for your exponent b. But you can also just simply apply any other logarithm to both sides. For example, the natural log. This is the one that is used most often because we know how to deal with its inverse um, nicely with the exponential function. So by applying the natural log here on both sides, we can track the b to the front once again. So b times the natural log. Um, I should use, no, I'm going to use log once again. I'm not going to use ln here. Um, I just was thinking, yeah, should I use ln because we are using log here, but if I don't write anything here, it means log base e. So this right here is the natural log of a is equal to the natural log of c. And now we can divide both sides by natural log of a under the condition that's not equal to zero, a not equal to one, giving us overall that b is on the one hand, the logarithm base a of c, or on the other hand, it's the logarithm of c, so the natural log divided by natural log of a. And this right here is the change of base formula. If you have the log base a of c, it's the same as the natural log or any other log actually, um, of c divided by the natural log of a. And we're going to make use of this formula, giving us natural log of n in the process nicely. So yeah. Now let us take a look at log base 8 of n. This right here is equivalent to saying we have 1 over now log base 8 of n. So the base is going to go down here in the denominator. So the natural log of 8 and we are going to have the natural log of n on top. Now we have negative and now here we have it the other way around. We have 1 divided by the natural log of 4 divided by the natural log of n. And all of this is equal to negative 5 over 2. Now we are just going to do some simple algebra and we are going to solve for the natural log of n here in the process. To do this, what we are going to do is we are going to take the reciprocals here, obviously, at first, giving us in the process the logarithm of 8 divided by log of n minus the log of n divided by the log of 4. It's equal to negative 5 over 2. Do you know what is also freaking me out? Namely that 8 and 4 are both powers of 2. 
Now let us rewrite it like this because logarithms and powers we can bring the powers to the front. Now 8 is nothing other than 2 to the third power meaning we can bring the 3 to the front. 4 is nothing other than 2 squared meaning we can bring the 2 to the front. And this is even nicer because now everything on the left hand side is with respect to the natural log of 2 and the natural log of n. I don't know if this is actually helpful, but it looks better now. I like it way more. <laughs> it's, it's just preference, okay? <laughs> don't, don't add me. And now we are just going to bring everything onto the same denominator and then we are going to solve for the log of n in the process. Now, bringing this onto the same denominator means the common denominator is going to be 2 times the natural log of 2 times the natural log of n and also 2 times 3 is 6 so 6 times log of 2 squared minus log of n times log of n is the natural log of n squared and all of this is equal to negative 5 over 2. And now under the condition that this down here is not equal to 0 we can multiply both sides by it meaning n must not be equal to 1 obviously. Multiplying both sides by it getting rid of the 2 and the 1 half gives us in the process 6 times the natural log squared of 2 minus the natural log squared of n is equal to okay 2 and 2 is going to cancel out so negative 5 times the log of 2 times the log of n. And now what we are going to do is we are going to solve a quadratic equation because if you do a proof by sharp i, by, by the keen i you could say, <laughs> you are going to notice that this right here is a polynomial of the second degree in our logarithm of n. What you can do is you can say okay let log of n be equal to x. Then you are going to have the equation 6 times log squared of 2 minus x squared is equal to negative 5 times log of 2 times x. And that's a quadratic equation that everyone can easily solve. We can find the zeros of that using the quadratic formula. So let's bring it into a form such that we can see clearly what the coefficients of the quadratic formula are going to be. Meaning we're going to bring this to the other side, adding it. We're going to subtract this part on both sides, giving us in the process zero is equal to the log squared of n. And then minus 5 times the log of 2 times the log of n. And then minus 6 times log squared of 2. And well, using the quadratic formula here in our log of n is going to give us two solutions for the log of n. With these two solutions being log 1, 2 of n being equal to. So the coefficient here is going to be negative 5 times log of 2, giving us before the third um, 5 over 2 times log of 2 plus or minus two thirds. Next we are going to take this part and we are going to square it giving us 25 divided by 4 log squared of 2. And now negative and negative is going to become positive so positive 6 times log squared of 2. This right here is our quadratic formula and now we can start simplifying and let me tell you what it's going to simplify nicely I mean it's a <laughs> tournament problem so it's bound to simplify nicely. So at first let's bring it onto the same denominator expanding 6 by 4 over 4 giving us 24 over 4 meaning down here in the discriminant what we are going to get is 25 plus 24 is going to give us 49 divided by 4 times log squared of 2. And obviously if we take the square root of that we are going to get 5 over 2 times log of 2 plus or minus square root of 49 is going to give us 7 divided by 2 times log of 2. Now we are going to get our two solutions that we were striving for. Namely the first solution is going to give us 5 over 2 so log of 2 is a common factor so something definitely log of 2. 5 over 2 plus 7 over 2 is 12 over 2 which is going to give us 6. 6 times log um, of 2. Now by using the logarithm property we can turn this into the logarithm of 2 to the 6th power and 2 to the 6th power is okay 2, 4, 8 then we are going to get um, 16, 32 and the last one is 64. So log of 64 and the other solution is going to give us similarly okay 5 over 2 minus 7 over 2 is going to give us a negative 2 over 2 which is negative 1 so negative log of 2 meaning that's an exponent of negative 1 giving us log of 1 half in the process. Now 
How can you now solve for n? Well, by using the exponential function on both sides, meaning the first solution in one is going to be equal to 64, meaning we're just going to compare arguments here basically. And the second solution is going to give us one half. But as mentioned before, as you have seen in screenshot two, we are only looking for natural numbered solutions for integer solutions. So this right here is our solution, n1 being equal to 64. And yeah, this concludes the video and I hope you did enjoy what you've seen today. I really like this problem because it makes use of very fundamental logarithm properties that everyone should know but um, it still needs a bit of a transformation and fiddling around such that you get to the end. But before we get to the end of the video I would like to thank today's sponsor Brian for sponsoring yet another video here on this channel. Brilliant is your source for the best interactive learning content out there on the internet, at least in my opinion. I have never seen another platform comparable to Brilliant before, which is going to transfer knowledge to the user in such a playful and intuitive fashion. With the nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer science, chemistry, no matter what it is you're striving for to learn in the STEM field, Brilliant definitely got something up their sleeve for you. One of my most favorite examples of the interactive learning concept is the geometry course. It's just so colorful and playful. You can grab the graphics, drag the corners around and try to figure out how the interior angles are going to act under the transformation of the triangle. It's seriously a nice concept and I can't recommend it enough. I'm even using it in my maths classes to show my students how the interior angle theorem is working out in a very intuitive fashion. So if this feels like it's something for you, if you think that you can get a kick out of Preint, then why not make sure to check out link at the top of the description preint.org slash flamplemaths. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Preint already, but more importantly the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they already have available on the website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. Don't forget to also check out my um, shop Stemergy where I sell handcrafted products. Also don't forget to pre-register for my mobile game Work, which is going to be released this month. And up until next video I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!